Our topic today is activities, and we are focusing on using video to train group leaders on activities and um, basically as a way to learn how to do activities. And we're going to talk about a top, top 10 games and activities. And basically using this idea of videos and sharing ideas through these meetings and using our activities wiki page to collaborate across regions to share activities and use one source for, for listing our activities and how to do them. And that is on what we call the organizing space of the wiki, which you read or an arrow pointing to that at the top left that shows that we're in the organizing space. And that means people who are not CCTs can access it with the correct login information. Okay. So do you want to start, Kathy, with? Yep. So one of the things we want to do is uh, finding ways that people can learn the games and activities at home and feel comfortable with them. So we did the videos of some games and Eric took a look at, we found a game called Drip Drip Drop, if you want to find that, Eric, because there was a request for some summer games. Okay. And Drip Drip Drop is a perfect game for summertime. Okay. So we looked that up. So to find that, just to show you, you'll see yep. a couple of contents here, and that's a physical activity. I could click that if I want, but I'm actually going to just scroll down so you can kind of see how I'm going down to physical activities. It's alphabetized now, and there's drip, drip, drop. And there's a link, short description. So what this um, initial page does is list the titles of activities and a short description. And what we want is a full page description of each activity um, that we can link to. So we'll go to drip, drip, drop. And then we have a single page with the details. And this is something you can print as a single page by going to these three dots and exporting to PDF or Word for printing. And that's an easy way to share a single activity or to print it for that for a course. And then you'll see the link to the video here. So I'll go to that. And you'll see a two, about a two and a half minute video, and it's an awesome visual to learn how to play that. And as Kathy said, it's a good summer activity because you're pouring water on the heads of children. And they love it. Yeah. And it's fun. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Kathy. So I was trying to see how challenging it would be to figure out a new game or how to find it on the video, you know, on YouTube. I'm not computer savvy very much. So I thought if I can do it, others can too. So I, there was a game I learned as a child called Fox and Geese. Okay. And that's a winter game for people that have snow. And it's really fun. So I just typed up winter game, child, Fox and Geese and looked around and there was this wonderful game that Eric is going to now. And it was a great video. And then I didn't have to get kids together to do it. I just found it there. And I gave Eric the link and Eric put it on here. So it also has the game. And then from the game, I went ahead and typed up the set up the game and the variations. So it also has the full details of the game, how you set it up to play it and any variation you might want. So do you want to click on that link, Eric, please? Sure. And this is a family that put it on. Fox and Geese. 
We're going to have fun. And they, she just shows you exactly what to do and how to play it and the kids. And so it's just another great activity. So if you have uh, any kind of a area that has lots of snow and you don't know what to do with kids, this is perfect and it doesn't cost money and it's easy to set up. So one of the things we were requesting of people or wanting to invite people to do is to find favorite games and look online. You might have something you had as a child or you've seen it at a you know camp or something like that. And then look and see if you can find a video and send it on. And if you want help in writing it up, I'm happy to help write it up. And then the next thing we were going to look at is ways in which we could use the wiki in a more functional fashion. So that's part of what Eric has too, is how to do it. And on Thursday, folks came up with ways to tag it. Do you want to share on that, Eric, how we came up and see if anybody else has any other ideas? Sure. So I was able to figure out how the wiki does tagging and that what they do is they call it labels. And you'll see here, um, I've added this um, link to labels. So let's go to there. And click that. And so I've labeled basically every page that has its own um, that has its own page. So what the idea is what we need is if you look under on the left toolbar, um, it lists all the activities where I've created a single page for it. And so that's what we need to do. For every activity we list on this wiki, we want it to link to its own separate page, and then we can tag it with a label. So um, let me clear this and go to um, some of these labels. Let's go to... Um, outdoor and so it will list all of the pages i've tagged as good for outdoors with sidewalk chalk foursquare and parachute games if i go back to those labels go indoor it'll list paper marbling bubble art scratch board art we go to this is a good que uh, common question, teens, what to do with teens. Right now I've only tagged Foursquare for teens. And you'll see not many are popping up. That's because under activities, we only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and 10, about a little over 10 different activities with its own page. So goal, is if we can all help each other write descriptions and find videos for the remaining activities and also any new ones that you have, then we'll create a page for it and tag it with these labels. And so where did you find, um, can you, can you show me, I see where you have all labels on your screen here. How, if I'm just popped up and I just, clicked on the child and teens and I've clicked on the organizing. Does this all labels show up automatically if I've just opened up mine? So to find to find it, yes, we do start with the organizing space. Then we go down, if you see on the left side has all the pages. Yep. We go to activities. Yeah. And I've basically just linked labels right there on the home activity. Okay. Okay. The other way to find it is if you're on a page that's labeled, let's see what we have for drip, drip, drop. You'll see at the bottom right, those are the labels for that page. Summer okay. and games and children. And there's a little pencil by it. So any page with labels has this pencil. And that's where oh, you can create the label. But also, let's say we 
Um, what's another label we can give to this? Drip, drip, drop. How about, um, um, let's just for fun create a water label, even though that's, I'll delete that later. So when you add it, um, okay, I'm sorry, I thought this was going to pop up something different. So let's, let me backtrack here and I'll cancel that. So I was able to um, find all labels in a way that I can't remember now. So I found all labels and then I just copied that link to this button here. I'll have to do some fiddling around to figure out how to get to it. I think this is the easiest way. The other way is, I think, going to be more difficult for everyone. So basically, you'll just have to remember, go to your activities homepage and then click labels here. That's pretty much going to be the easiest way for everyone. And you'll see that every wiki page has the potential to add a label. So even this home page does. But what you'll notice is all of the labels are actually for the whole space. So it's going to be mixed with things that are not related to activities. So you're going to see meeting notes here and file lists. So it's the way this works is it's going to be mixed in with this entire organizing space. Yeah. So we also have a organizing by this table of contents. So these are bigger headings that can also help you find what you're looking for. Getting to know you games, physical activities, quiet and calm activities, arts and crafts, and service activities. So that's another way to quickly find what you need. And the labels can actually cross-reference different categories, so it's a little more versatile. They can be a physical activity that's also a summer one or a children's label, so you can have multiple categories. So it's just different ways of helping you to find what you're looking for more quickly. So would it be helpful to have a little tab under there about how to use that, what you just told us and like a descriptor? Um, possibly. Um, basically how I see people reading this is once they get to search by specific categories, they just go there and then they'll just see what they're looking for. And perhaps here, um, if it's editable, editable, I don't think it is. Um, we could write a description. Basically it would go right here and it would just be a little longer than what I've written. So we could do that, yeah. And then I have a question also. If So if the goal is that we have each activity has its own page that we can then share with other activities coordinators and hopefully a video, a YouTube or a homemade one, we don't need to be concerned about the labeling. We could send it to you mm -hmm. and tell you what kind it is and then you will label it. Is this correct? Yeah, that that's, we could do that. And then if someone notices something needs a label, you can always comment at the bottom of any activity page. Just say, we should label this for teens because we need to know more ideas for what works good for teens. Something like that. And, and I am one of the, I'm the wiki editor for children's spaces. So I'd add it to the, I would add those labels. Yeah, good idea. Okay, we're at 18 minutes. Should we move on to the next part, Kathy? Sure. We were wanted to go now to what we, if we had top 10 games, we wanted to maybe possibly have a top 10 category too for, and what we had talked about on Thursday were things such as categories of like hot hip pocket games that you would use for last minutes. Um, things that were favorite, either 
with a big group, with a small group, before quiet ones, things like that. So if we could just think a, a little minute and then anybody has a, a game that they thought or an activity they thought was really successful over and children really like and want to do it again, we could add that to our list and make sure that we have a page for it and a video for it. So, uh, so a favorite? note on the on the previous topic we were discussing. So, is there an action item uh, for all of us to um, then go find the the games and create write ups and videos? I was wondering if we should maybe um, with the games that we have currently, do we need to do some sort of a division and say, okay, you know, each of us takes up two and writes it? I don't know if that's an action item we had from our previous discussion. The way I see I it. I think that's a lovely idea. Yeah, go ahead, Kathy. I said, I think it's a lovely idea. And if you know of um, a couple of games that you want to, then you could um, let us know and we that'd be great. Do you have, so for example, Kanika, do you have a couple of games that you know right now that you will do? Um, yeah, I guess um, just one game had come to mind, uh, but I, I, my question was more about, so the existing stuff that's already on the page, um, I guess I was a little confused. So that piece, is that already written up and does it need any more work or are we saying for the new stuff we should write up and? No, we, there's quite a few activities listed here that do not have any video or could use better description. It needs a single page for description. And if, if there's one or two activities that you do and you know, and you see it's not really detailed here, then you can create that. And like I said, there's only about 11 or 12, um, um, activities here that have videos. So anything that's not listed as a single page here could use. So from my, yeah. my understanding, Eric, on if you look at the CTC organizing activities, there's really only bubble art, drip, drip, drop, four square, fox and keys, heads up, paper marbling, parachute games, um, scratch board art, and sidewalk chart that have a single page written up. Is that correct? Yeah, all of these. Right. So all the others are still needed to have that done active, you know, written out thoroughly on a single page and a video. Is that clear okay. then, Kanika? Does that make sense? Yeah, got it. So I guess then what I was suggesting is this, the activities that don't have a single page written up for them. Um, should we, uh, among this group, divide that up to say, you know, each one of us picks up one or two and then uh, we do a little write up and find the videos. Um, basically, we, we take up to collect the material for that page and we can either create it or um, send it to Eric to yeah. put it on a new page. What I would say is um, if there's an activity that you really like, go hmm. for two activities that you really like, go for it, whether it's on here or not. Um, and it's really just, it's not really an assignment. It's more of an invitation to go and do that, <laughs> actually a long-term right. long invitation, meaning we want to keep doing this. So as you find an activity that you really think is fun and you're good at it, and maybe there's an activity that you can do with, with your daughter and film yourselves doing it, then what we can do is put our own video on our YouTube channel um, for activities that we're actually doing every year on our courses. Um, that might be unique to our centers. So there's another way to sh show a video as well by recording ourselves doing it. And that's that's kind of my idea. I don't know. What do you think, Kathy? I think that's very well said. I like the invitation and I also like the long term. So I would really encourage folks to do that. So Anika, Anika if you want to do that, yay then go for it. And if you happen to know which one or two that you want, or even a new one, I can write it down so others won't do it. Um, but it's all good. And it's fun. It's really fun. And I agree with Eric, if you find one that you like, then it's more, it's more exciting and more fun. 
Yeah, that sounds good. Um, how about I go through that list and um, I send an email back? Great. That's, yeah, okay. So can we, anybody else have some, like I'd like to say, I, I'll share a game that I find very um, helpful and, and pretty easy to do. And you can do it in small groups and large groups. You can do it inside, you can do it outside. And that is the banana stick game. Okay, so that So is, it's down here. It's down here, but it doesn't have a write-up. So yeah. Does it have, have one somewhere? I thought it did. Does it have its own page? It does not, but it has a short description. You'll see it there now. It's right here. But I have, so what I need to do, I have a full write-up of this game. So what I need to do is send it to Eric and see if I can um, either find a video or create a video, because it's just really one of those great hip pocket games to have. Uh, um, so all you do is you can pick any kind of, even if you're outside the Dama Hall waiting for kids to come in for checking or whatever, um, you can take a stick, you can bring um, uh, any kind of a long stick-like thing that you can use to represent something. So you start and you have someone that so you, they say um, begin and then they use the stick for like a bat or peel a banana or whatever. And then when they're finished acting that out using the stick, then they say curtain and the kids raise their hand and guess. And they, the setup is real important in terms of the kids, you know, not just picking up the stick and peeling a banana, but maybe going into the kitchen and opening up cupboards and looking in the fridge and all that stuff before they pick up the stick. But kids can, some kids love to act and other kids just love to guess. And it doesn't even matter, you know, if you do it five times and other kids don't, because some kids don't even like to, but it's a great one for big groups or small groups. So that's what I would say. And, and lots of age groups like it too. Another way I would ask this question is um, maybe each of us just say the name of two activities that they know they do on courses that work well. Um, and then Kathy will write them down. Okay, great. You don't have to describe the whole activity, but just what do you know that you do that works and we'll compile a list. And so I'll go next. Um, I know that one thing we've done regularly on teens courses in the Northwest is um, duct tape wallets for teens. And that's, I'm guessing, under, under um, arts and crafts, maybe. Yeah, there it is. And so there is a link there, but it's not to its own page. It goes straight to a YouTube video. So Kanika, we have that one. And so that's one I'll mention for myself. Duct tape wallets, teens. Who wants to go next? Uh, I have another one. So the name and adjective one, um, uh, I think it's listed here. I can uh, write up a page for this one. We tried this in both the teens and the kids courses and it's something that they all really like. So the activity is um, you would say your name and then you would say an adjective that starts with the first letter of your name. So I could say kind Kanika. Um, and then, you know, then um, someone else goes and then they pick the first letter of their name and so on. So it was a great ice breaking activity on the first day uh, for everyone to know each other. Yeah, we also found this game very fun, and children love it too. Okay, who's next? So, uh, one game that we have been doing here in Austin is Seven Up, and that is quite fun game for the kids. So what you do is um, you use your hand, your, um, the, the direction your fingers are pointing uh, as a direction that game the person is going to uh, respond next, right? So you keep your hand on your chest and the fingers, and you'll count 
uh, you'll start from one to seven, and the person who comes to, who has to say seven, they were supposed to keep their hand on their head. And uh, that's where, I mean, so earlier we used to do, if you forget to, to do it right, then you'll be out of the game, but now we don't do it. We do just honor system. So you just keep account in your head. And that is uh, a fun game. So I can take it up and write about it. If it's not What's it called? Seven Up. Oh, Seven Up. Oh, I love Seven Up. Oh, that's such a fun one. Yeah. Yeah. And there are some other games too that we've been playing here, like uh, Find the Leader. I don't know if it is here as well. So one person is chosen as a real estate part of the room, and the other person, and one of the uh, other persons in the in the group will be chosen as a leader. And everybody has to. Is it the one beat leader or who? Uh, yeah. It, is that it? Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. We call it find the leader, but yeah, it's it is the same thing. And just now, another one you like a lot is uh, stop and go, right? Yeah, stop and go. Yeah. Is stop and go like red light, green light? That's yes, right. The same. And yeah, sometimes children just really love it. And servers love it too. So we, everybody play at the same time. And um, <clears throat> there have been. I'm sorry, I'm unmuted. So one more game that we have been trying um, is Simon Says. Um, I haven't played myself, but I've just watched it on YouTube and it seems a lot of fun. So we have been planning to try out in the next um, uh, children's course. So I have a question uh, for everybody. Mm -hmm. Are there games or... Um, ages or situations, that's another question, is where you would find something needed, like a type of game that you think is needed or a time of day when a certain game or activity would be helpful, that kind of thing. Is there any way, anything you see that would be beneficial for us to look up a type or a category for an activity or a game? So, um... One thing that I found is because we have recently started doing teens courses, right? So we kind of struggle with with uh, with the right games for this age group, right? And another thing is that sometimes uh, whether, I mean, you plan for outdoor games and it may not work out because of rain or whatever be the reason. So being able to basically change from outdoor to indoor Right, so we want to be able to search for indoor games and outdoor games and uh, based on age group. We so, have found that, go ahead, sorry. Uh, uh, I was just saying that um, the parachute bracelets are really excellent for teens, both male and female really like them. And yes, they, we, you know. We also, yes, we agree, <laughs> they really love it. So, Kathy, um, do you guys have some games for the boys? Because, I mean, the outdoor games are good, but what happens if you can't go outdoor? And uh, that becomes a struggle, right? Because the Dhamma house that we have here in Austin is not very big. Right. And having so many kids indoor and having them engaged in the activities to keep them right busy and while they are waiting for the next session so that becomes a bit of a challenge sometimes well i think that parachute like if you have your video on now eric's right there it really is super successful and the boys will make them over and over and over again the girls like them too but they really like also like bead bracelets you know or big big safety pins that you can put beads in different things and they can wear them like a pin to take home. They like that. But the boys love the parachute cords and there's a video for that too. So that's an excellent one. I've seen that too, that, the, that worked really well with boys. And it sounds like your wallet one is good also. Yeah. There's another one that I've heard they do in BC, um, soapstone carving. And there's, I think I have something on the 
with you for that. Actually, I think it's on the Northwest page. I think I still need to add it, but it's called soapstone carving. I wanted to mention we're past 10 or we're past 30 minutes. So we have kind of maybe 10 more minutes. What do you think we should do in the next 10 minutes, Kathy? I, I, I think we're doing well. If anybody has any questions or, you know, any other suggestions to add to it or anything more on the bracelets, I think it's been a very productive. Sounds like someone's trying to speak. If not, I um, I wanted to sh explain one thing, and that's that this wiki page of activities is not in our manual. If we go to um, our CCT manual, which is on the wiki, um, it has its own section for the guidelines for activities. So this is now in the CCT space. And let me show you that. So we're in the CCT space. And there's the, the training manual and all the pages within the manual. And then this is the activities section. And um, here it basically lists our guidelines and it also um, a list of activities, which is basically a very short list. And I've added all these to this other activities section in the organizing space. So I just want to make it clear that there's these two um, pages on activities and trying to um, maybe working with Karen a little more, make it more um, obvious and more um, interlinked so that we're not um, missing one or the other. So just be aware that guidelines are listed here, and then it links on this page to the other space where we can actually add a lot more that it's not going to fit in a manual that we print. So just so you know, there are those two areas for activities. And they both, you can flip back and forth between them if you look in the description at the top. Um, they go, but they can go back and forth so that we're aware that they're there. So is that, go ahead, Kathy. I, I was just going to sum up kind of what I heard people saying today, that a couple of people have volunteered to look through their games and write up a page and look for a video and send that information to you. And that there sounds like a need for more teens, older kids games slash activities that we find really beneficial and generally all kids like. And also games and activities that work in smaller spaces that may not be at the center as a lot of us do um, one day courses off center sites. Would you all agree? Yeah, that will help. Thank you. I wanted to add um, two things about the teen games. Uh, last year after the CCT workshop, one of the CCTs had brought um, these twister mats. Uh, it's like this big tarp with colored dots. And we tried that on a teen's course and they loved it. Um, so I don't know if, um, you know, if everybody has those at the centers or, um, you know, how much they are, but that is something that was a big hit with the teens. Uh, the other one uh, was, it seemed like teens were generally very interested in just being outdoors and playing. Um, so we did just frisbee outside uh, on a nice day. So a summer game and they were, uh, they had a great time playing frisbee. Um, Kanika, when you played the twister, did you play it where they have it balanced, where they use like a tissue paper or something like that on their head? Did you do it that way? No, what they were doing is we just spread that big uh, twisted tarp on the ground and then they they would just, they would, there was one person who was calling out colors. So they would say left, uh, I think there are four colors, they're red, green, yellow, and blue. So they would call out colors and say, uh, right hands on red. And right, right. right they played it the regular way as opposed to putting, um, like you can put a 
tissue box on your head and you have to balance, right? You have to move the, the color, but you move your legs across. And then if the tissue box falls over, you go to the be end of the line again and see which team gets there. Yeah, People they didn't across. do the balancing. They didn't do the balancing, but they they were going pretty crazy with the rules. And uh, at some point, all the limbs were on yellow, and <laughs> it was just uh, quite a challenge. So I, I don't know if they could have possibly balanced a box. <laughs> okay, I want to add one last thing before we close. Um, I wanted to show everyone how you can share a an activity page. So let's say you are having a course coming up and you want to train the group leaders in, um, let's say the, the um, let's say parachute games and you go to that page and it has a description and you just want to share that and you go to this icon with the rectangle and the arrow and it's to share that page. You can copy the link and post it in an email. If um, they'll need to have wiki access. So RCCCs really give out access to the wiki. They know the username and passwords. And so you have to um, first see if they have a wiki account and we want to actually encourage people to have wiki accounts especially if they're if they're going to be a regular user or if they're someone who's going to be more long term not just a one course group leader um, you can get a give a one course group leader the general organizing password which i included in this last email invitation so anyway this is how you can get a the proper link to copy and share. If I wanted to share this with someone I know as another CCT or someone on the wiki, I can, let's say, Horna's on here, I think, start typing her name, there it is, it pops up, and then I can share it. So that's important because this is part of the systematization and collaboration across regions. This is how you can use a wiki to make it easier to, to create and share and organize together. And that's the purpose of these monthly meetings and also future meetings with other topics. We'll start to see how it becomes a, a place to collaborate and to learn from each other and develop this space so that it, it's a central location for everyone and it's for the long term beyond our own service. So it's very important work. And if we can do that well, um, it'll be a good example for everyone around um, North America and South America. They're also on this. So I'm, I'm excited to, to do these. One clarification I have. So um, when we write up about an activity, are we, can we just come here directly? I don't have access as of now, but can we just come here to the wiki and edit it on our own? Or are we are supposed to send the write up to you, Eric? Yeah, for now you would send it to me and I would create it. And over time, if, if people are understanding the wiki and want to be an editor, um, that would be more than welcome. Um, first, want to see how people are using it, and if they're a frequent user and get an idea of how it works, then we can go to the next step of editing. But yeah, it's easy for me to add it, so definitely just send it to me, and I'll just put it up. So um, maybe we'll just wrap it up, and thank you all for coming. And I thought it was really productive and it's already um, improving the site. We've already changed the, the table of contents and created labels and have um, several activities added from Thursday. So thank you all and we'll keep, keep at it and stay tuned for the next meeting and hope you can join.